The New Types Podcast. The current subject. CBF, your answer to the next question I will ask you now will determine the future of our friendship. Father, why won't you accept me? I'm built different! I'm fed up with this world! Oh, shut the fuck up, guys! Haha, <laughs> <laughs> I stole your mug and your lion. Alright, now you're accusing me of working for Katakawa. I don't know if I appreciate that. What are those teleporter noises? Anyone there? Oh! Oh, wait. And just one more thing. That goddamn movie, though. That movie. That was a movie. Yeah. Even compared to the first movie, this one is a little bit worse. It's fucking awful. The first movie is weird where it's like, the double segment on that where we get another character-defining moment for Shotaro, who has to overcome what's essentially a corrupted ghost of Sokichi by the dummy Dopant. That was amazing. The Decade stuff, you didn't watch it, we did, me and Lokra did, and I was like, eh, you know. We, we haven't seen Decade. The ending was garbage with the final fight, and it was abysmal, but everything after that with the ending was amazing. But the second movie... The second movie, that was... It's awful. It's, it's terrible. It's awful. I gave it 3 out of 10. CBF, you said you were giving it a 5, and all I can say what? is what the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with your brain? It's a low five. It's because, well, it's it's because two things. Well, the final, like, the, it had some good style. Some of it was enjoyable, even if some of it was enjoyably bad. Yeah, it's like a four to a light five, and like, Shotaro's still doing great Shotaro things. Most of the characters who aren't Philip, because Philip is pretty wonky in this movie, most of the returning cast is still good. And the ending was alright. And I will say, even though as bad as the ending is, as bad as the ending is, while the final few moments were good, not as good as the first movie. The climax, as bad as it was, was still better than the climax of the of the crossover movie before it. The crossover movie's climax was had literally nothing redeeming about it. That doesn't that doesn't count. It's a crossover movie. We expect them to be bad. It's because of the MILF, isn't it? No. You know. I will put a pin in that one and just say, CBF, it's time me and Kaiser send you to rehab because you clearly have a copium problem. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day. I never thought I'd see the day when you would give a Kamen Rider thing a higher score than me and by a full two points, potentially, no less. The greatest of crimes. <laughs> It is bad, but it's, it is enjoyable sometimes. And yeah, you're enjoyably bad, bad sometimes. <laughs> and I'm enjoyably good most of the time, unlike this movie. <laughs> That's fair. So, so this movie is so... Uh, okay, okay, I, on the actual, like, critique beyond a just, like, basic dunking, this movie is just, like, so bizarrely kuma. It has this weird... <laughs> sexual energy, like, from the acting, the- the portrayal of some of the characters, the cinematography, like, like, oh, we have- we have never this- this squad that's supposed to be, like, this group that's been working together for ages, and they don't come across like a group at all, they come across like an assortment of individuals, even though they're literally supposed to be a military unit, and you have only one fe female member, and when she's dying, she conveniently, like, goes in t with a tank top, Covered from head to toe, like dripping wet, leaning forwards, and like a uh, clutching at the villain of the film. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, how embarrassing and tasteless can you get? <laughs> My dog! <laughs> yeah, like, Double already had its off and Coomer moments, but this is something else. And again, only two of the main, and two of the antagonists have really anything about them. That being, again, the woman who ha who is insecure about the fact that she is physically cold, she does not have the warmth of a living person anymore, and the main guy who is like, Philip, you and I are kind of similar, right? Because we, 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 we died before and we were brought back by our mothers that we have attachments towards. And I gotta make the, all the city feel like me. I gotta make this entire world feel kind of like me. But they don't do it that much interesting with that beyond sprinkles of that and him having a, a, cool, a cool design both off the field and when he's in common rider mode. Well, to be fair, that's a really, 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 yeah, that's not, really not, low not bar. A high bar. Yeah. Yeah. 
then everyone else is either just boring, exists for the action, or they're the guy who was basically the gay camp stereotype taken to a degree that would probably be seen oh, as offensive yeah. by a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, that's... And then there's the other guy whose entire personality is just muscle. Yeah, and the guy who makes a game out of sh out of shooting his enemies. Yeah, talk about uh, talk about bang bang pull my devil trigger. And uh, and you know when when I uh, we're talking about critiques, going a little bit back to the Coomer thing, the heart of this, you know how in the other movie that like they actually gave you know Shotaro an interesting conflict while fleshing out the whole past with uh, Sokichi. Right? Oh yeah, like the only female villain in the film, like pins him against a wall, like with her boot, <laughs> and presses down on him. On fire, and the fire damage does nothing. Oh yeah, oh yeah, never have I ever seen a Kamen Rider movie so thoroughly disrespect the idea that the villains are superhuman by, uh, by having Shotro just, like, take a- take, like, a point-blank hit from one of them, and, like... Without being transformed, by the way. Yes. Who, like, I don't know if we should blame the action director or the director, but all you needed to do was have the motherfucker deflect. Have him deflect, at least. Yeah, it, but like, going back to Phil, his whole thing is that he is projecting hard about Shroud onto the main uh, lady villain of the movie, and they take it such a... Sexual. Okay, you can you can look at this and tell me there's, no, there's nothing sexual about this, to which I can say, Yes, yeah, there is absolutely nothing sexual about an anxious boy going to a grown woman being like, uh, in a one-on-one -on -one room, being like, uh, do I talk with her, do I not, oh, I'm so nervous, where when he gets in, uh, and he gets pinned to a wall, and then they talk, and she wipes some food off his, off his cheek. And she's in a nightgown! <laughs> While in a nightgown. And then just showing her in like a- in that kind of dress, yeah. And then- and then for the rest of the film, she's like in a- in a like mini- not mini skirt, but you know, like a very short dress that we get several upskirt shots of. No, nothing sexual about that at all to this character that's being portrayed as a sort of surrogate mother thing. Yeah. Shame, because her cyclone design was actually pretty cool. So much about that was also very contrived, where it's like, no, you were tricking me the entire time! It's like, yeah, Philip, you fell so hard! She barely even had to try. She she felt guilty about it because she had a vague, un entirely unintentional resemblance to Shroud. She didn't try at all. She had a different hair color. Yes, the hair color and she had a gun. And it just worked, it just worked that way. It was so contrived, because so much about this movie is just contrivances that allow sometimes cool-looking things to happen. I am still going to bat for Cyclone Joker Gold Extreme, though. Because nothing ever makes sense in this movie, things just get contrived. It's an Ichigo reference, he was empowered by the wind of Futo City. I, I get it, It's we get to see so many of the denizens cheering them on. But it is the biggest, dumbest contrivance for a one-off power-up that never appears in the show. You're the biggest, dumbest contrivance. <sighs> and it, and also, after a fight that had some cool choreography, some of the best, but was in an awful CG set. And all of this still takes place in the awful CG set of Futo Tower. Tom Rider has some awful CG stuff whenever mons people just go full monster mode. Also, O's is here. Yeah, Kamen Rider A to Z Forever, the guy in Memories of Fate, the director's cut featuring Kamen Rider O's. Oh, by the way, in the last episode of the show, no, last, no, second to last, they referenced O's, remember? Because they mentioned the Never Project, and then you see the core medals. I'm like, it's the core medals, I know what those are! Yeah, but yeah, and then he just suddenly randomly shows up at this movie, and just runs in with the coin to grab it, and he's like, all right. He was still one of the best bits of the movie. All right, you, you're, you're doing your thing? Let, let me help you out, man. We got this guy. It's like, uh, okay, yeah, but it's like, it, you see my problem though, right? It just contrives things out of thin air to happen, and then it prays to God that whatever happens is cool. Only sometimes is that the case. Also again, I love how we see all the denizens of the city come back and just like sheer on the gang and we're like, Kamen Rider! Kamen Rider! I'm like, yeah. Yeah, but none of that would ever be as good as in the Decade crossover movie when Shotaro punched the dummy dopant as Kamen Rider School, Kamen Rider uh, Mr. Sokichi himself, going through that moment and then 
beating the shit out of him eventually, just like no selling him. Whenever the dude's like, you, you wouldn't hit me, I, I am not an Isokichi. Doesn't say a word. Pete beating his ass in. Just repeatedly punches him. That is the coolest showcase of the heat memory ever. Yeah, and then also in the end when Decade just basically allows him to talk with an alternate universe version of Narumi Sokiji. And he said he likes his hat. Yeah, he's like, he's like that hat looks good on you. He's, like, he's basically like, well done, son. I like the cut of your gym. And then after he leaves, shows her sleep. <laughs> he likes the cut of my gym. He likes the cut of my gym. He's <laughs> like, yes. This is- this is why I love Shotaro. He's still cool enough in the second movie, but, you know. Like, honestly, Shotaro is one of the few good things about that friggin' movie. By the way, I swear to god, take a shot every time Shotaro and Philip have a little hissy fit at each other and fight. Oh my god, during that movie, it was terrible! I was like, why? Why? Oh my god! It was already kind of contrived and weak in the first one, but it's somehow even worse here. We literally got past this! Timeline-wise, we literally got past this a few episodes ago, and there was nothing... it like... It happened... it happened in the end of the show, too, in like episode 47 and 48. I mean, at least on there it made way more sense, because Philip was dying. And it was also due to Shotaro both being impulsive and then eventually being Honestly, a little too much of a dumb fuckass at this point for where he's in, because we already had enough moments where we didn't even mention the episode with Isamu and the the two who oh turned God. out to have been lovers co-conspirating. That was when Shotaro was really coming into his own. Oh yeah. Even though he got even though he got outplayed, and then he got a pep talk from Philip. But then they came in driving in to nobody's perfect, walking on the bridge. Just that was. Uh, Perfect! That was them, top form, and then getting the extreme form that looks like an oh, friggin... In the original form, it was already great, even better than this one, and this one is just like a wrestling fit done well. And just like, Shotaro in the final third can be top of his game, but he could also be at the worst of his game, but when he's at top of his game, he's peak. We didn't get to mention this in the main episode, but yeah, oh my god, episode 31 and 32. This perfect episode. That's one, of my, that's one of my favorite stories in the franchise. And that's when you had a common boner for the first time. Yes, it is, it is. Uh, to wrap up, final thing. Kamen Rider Eternal, that's an awesome suit, but Katsumi Daido is an awful character. Awful. He feels like a weird jumble of ideas that are all under-fleshed out. Like, he had the whole thing of, ah! He's, he's mid. He's a mid character in a movie that is a little below mid. It's kind of bad, actually. Oh, so like a shonen movie. Yeah, this really is kind of like the like the average bad shonen movie, complete with just like boring antagonists that just show up. Except these have sprinkles of something in there, but it fizzles out. Yeah, except he had the whole ah ah. So this is what it's like to die. I forgot what that was like. And it's like really is that what he wanted? Sure, fuck it, whatever. Anyway. Anyway, double good movies, not Terrible. so good. Well, the first one, the crossover movie has some really good stuff if you just watch the double stuff. The second movie, not good. Double, still top two favorite Kamen Rider installments. Fuck this movie though, it's awful, it's horrible. Lone Taro, sign us off. I'm Shotaro, I'm Shotaro, I'm Shotaro, I'm Shotaro, I'm Shotaro, I get to be Shotaro, I'm Shotaro, I'm Shotaro, I'm Shotaro. Okay, we're done now. I'm CBF, I CB Philip. And I am Kaiser Shonen. And despair was not the goal of this show, only when it ended.